This week we are going to look at a figure that helped keep me interested in G.I. Joe when a large part of the toy line was going off in a very strange direction. This figure may not be as well remembered now, but in 1988, for a short time, he was the face of G.I. Joe. Cobra Commander 788 here. It's time for another vintage G.I. Joe toy review. And this week we have a guest. We're going to get some help from a friend of the channel, Kevin from SEO Toy Review. Say hello, Kevin. Uh, Kevin? Say hello, Kevin. All right, maybe Kevin will be around later. The G.I. Joe toy line that was launched in 1982 has always included science fiction elements. Even right at the beginning, they had laser rifle troopers and jetpacks. So our G.I. Joe from the 80s could be viewed as futuristic military. G.I. Joe did futuristic military in a number of different ways. For instance, Battle Force 2000 from 1987 was overtly futuristic, and more science fiction elements were added added to the line as it went on. When I think of futuristic military, I don't imagine it looking anything like Battle Force 2000 or any of the other sub-teams that they grafted science fiction elements onto. I don't think Mega Marines or Star Brigade look like the military of the future. When I imagine the military of the future, I imagine something like the subject of this week's video, the Steadicam machine gunner from 1988, Repeater. Apparently I wasn't the only one to think so because when this figure came out, his his likeness was slapped onto a lot of merchandise. Kevin from SEO Toy Review is going to show us some of that merchandise. Right, Kevin? Right. Let's look at the perfect marriage of science fiction and military themes. HCC 788 presents Repeater. HCC 788 presents Repeater. This is Repeater, G.I. Joe's steady cam machine gunner from 1988. This figure was introduced in 1988. It was also available in 1989 and was discontinued for 1990. Repeater takes his name from a type of firearm, a repeater or repeating rifle. There were two versions of Repeater in the Vintage line, but he was released three different ways. Version 1 was released in 1988 on a single card. Version 2 was released in 1989 as part of the Night Force sub-team. It was on a double card with Night Force Charbroil. It used the same mold as Version 1, but in Night Force colors. In 1993, Version 2 was released again, bagged with the Mail-Away Rapid Deployment Force set, which also included Fast Draw and Night Force Shockwave. They all had different accessories, and the set included a black special Rapid Deployment Force Edition Pocket Patrol Pack. Repeater fits in the lineage of several different G.I. Joe traditions. He is a machine gunner. Although G.I. Joe didn't have a lot of designated machine gunners before 1988, Rock and Roll and Roadblock were important members of the team. He is a U.S. Army Ranger. G.I. Joe's earlier Ranger Stalker and Beachhead were significant characters and leaders on the team. He is wearing a desert uniform. G.I. Joe first moved into desert themes arguably in 1983 with Grunt version 2 and Doc. In 1984 there was a new desert themed vamp with Clutch version 2 and in 1985 G.I. Joe got a designated desert trooper, Dusty. Ever since then G.I. Joe has kept a contingent of troops and vehicles equipped for desert fighting. One desert-themed vehicle released the same year as Repeater was the 1988 Desert Fox, a nice desert vehicle, and Repeater looks pretty good manning the machine gun. But looking at the colors of the Desert Fox contrasted with Repeater, it really makes me wish the orange parts on the Desert Fox were in a different color, perhaps a green that would match Repeater's vest and backpack. The tan and brown in Repeater's uniform is definitely supposed to be a desert color theme, 
theme. The green isn't perfectly desert focused, but it still complements the other colors pretty well. This was pre-Desert Storm. In the 1980s, the image of the American soldier still reflected the Vietnam era, with a lot of green and woodland and jungle camouflage. In the 80s, a few conflicts in the Middle East pushed the public attention in that direction. G.I. Joe is based loosely on the real-world Delta Force, or the first Special Forces Operational Detachment Delta. In the first issue of the G.I. Joe comic book, the team is referred to as Special Counter-Terrorist Group Delta, codenamed G.I. Joe. One of Delta Force's first missions was an attempted rescue of hostages in Iran, a mission that failed. That incident was fictionalized in the G.I. Joe comic book as one of G.I. Joe's first missions. What this means is G.I. Joe has been in the desert since its inception. Repeater continues that tradition and, to me, embodies what a G.I. Joe should look like. Apparently, Hasbro's licensees also thought this is what G.I. Joe should look like because they put Repeater's face on just about everything. And now, I think, Kevin from SEO Toy Review will show us some examples of Repeater as the face of G.I. Joe. Right, Kevin? Hey, Hoodie Coco! Haha, -ha, there he is. Told you he'd be here. All this talk about repeaters reminded me of a joke from when I was a kid. Pete and Repeat are in a boat. Pete fell out. Who's left? Pete and Repeat are in a boat. Pete fell out. Who's left? Pete and Repeat are in a boat. Pete fell out. Who's left? Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, well, I have a joke. Peter and Repeater are sitting on a car, Peter shoots Repeater, and oh, that doesn't work. The real reason I'm here is I wanted to share with you and your viewers some really cool G.I. Joe licensed merchandise that features Repeater. The first item we have here are some G.I. Joe loot bags. These were for giving out party favors at your G.I. Joe themed birthday party in 1988. The loot bags feature Shockwave, Repeater, and Spearhead. It's a pretty decent likeness of all of the G.I. Joe characters on the package there. And they're sold in an 8-pack made by Unique. Repeater is even the character featured on the hang tab for the loot bags. To go along with the loot bags, we've got a set of party invitations with envelopes. Just like the loot bags, you get 8 invitations. These are made by Unique as well. Feature the same artwork, although I think the print quality is a little bit cleaner on the invitations here. There's a dog tag on the back that has the information for the party. This set is still sealed so I don't know what's written on the inside but these are very similar to the Sergeant Slaughter invitations that were made in 86. In 1988 Milton Bradley released a set of four mural puzzles for G.I. Joe. Each one of the puzzles could connect to make a larger picture. Scene 3 is called Road Pig vs. Repeater. And surprise, surprise, it features Road Pig, Repeater, as well as Sergeant Slaughter's Warthog, and the Cobra Bug. As part of their Yo's Radical Yo-Yo's line, Spectra Star released a G.I. Joe-themed yo-yo, and of course, it had Repeater on it. They made a few other licensed yo-yos, including Donald Duck, Pee Wee Herman, and Ghostbusters. This may not be an exhaustive list of all the different licensed products that featured Repeater on them, but the last item I have to show off is a bubble bath container released by Ducare Bioessence. Repeater's head screws off to make the cap for the bubble bath. It's a pretty decent likeness to his action figure. It's got some different symbols up here on the top and some red markings on his shoulders there. But he looks pretty good. I mean, they even got the fact that he only wears one glove. They did change his gun to silver. It's missing the little steady cam part. But they did a great job. He's even got the digital camo down there. His backpack is molded on. And he's got this little blue base to stand on with a sticker on it. 8.5 fluid ounces. All right, Hooded Cover Commander. That was the licensed merchandise I had to show off. I'll get out of your hair and let you get back to your review. Let's take a look at Repeater's accessories, starting with his machine gun. The machine gun needs to be removed with some care. It can be placed in both of his hands and pegged onto the figure, so all of those points need to be treated with care so you don't break off one of the grips or the peg. What we have here is a two-piece assembly, the machine gun and the body mount. The body mount pegs into the side of the machine gun. I'm going to remove that for now so we can look 
at the machine gun first. The contents of the card on which Repeater was packaged call this an electromechanical machine gun. It is in black plastic. It has a grip on the back and on the side, and both of those grips will fit in the figure's hand. On the same side as the side peg, there is a hole for the peg of the body mount. We will take a look at that in a moment. It has a slot that goes all the way through it for ammunition, but it does not include an ammunition belt. And this is my biggest problem with early G.I. Joe machine gunners. A lot of them did not come with ammunition. Some later machine guns did, but the earlier ones didn't. This is not to my knowledge based on any real world weapon, but it is based on a fantasy weapon, which I will discuss, but let's look at the rest of the system first. This is the body mount for the machine gun. It is also in black plastic. Uh, it's kind of a long bar with a couple drums on it and some pegs. It has a peg on one end for pegging into the action figure. Uh, and then in the center, it has a large black drum and an extension with another peg that pegs into the machine gun. And then at the other end, it has another barrel that looks like it's supposed to be a counterweight for the machine gun. You can peg the body mount into the side of the machine gun and then peg it into repeater's belt, like so. And that is the steady cam machine gun. The body mount will pivot on the belt peg and the machine gun will elevate on its peg. And it has a pretty wide range of motion. And when the machine gun is not in use, you can even swing it around to his back and out of the way. You can fit both grips into the figure's hands and they do fit pretty well. They don't seem to be stretching the thumbs too much, so I'm not too worried about breakage. But while the steady cam machine gun has a nice range of motion on that body mount, the figure's articulation really doesn't when he's in that pose. So if you have both hands on the machine gun, you're not going to get a huge range of motion on that. This isn't the only time G.I. Joe attached weapons to a figure's hip or belt. A couple examples in 1990, Pathfinder had two machine guns attached to his belt. In 1990, Rampart had a peg on his belt that his machine gun could hook onto. This is supposed to be a steady cam machine gun system. A Steadicam is a stabilization arm for a motion picture camera. It allows for a steady shot even when the camera operator is walking or running over uneven ground. Based on how a Steadicam works, Repeater's vest is probably also part of the system. The idea of mounting a machine gun on the Steadicam is to stabilize the machine gun, allowing for smooth, independent motion and steady aiming. The idea of a machine gun connected to a Steadicam rig was popularized by the 1986 science fiction movie Aliens. It was common for G.I. Joe to draw inspiration from other areas of pop culture. Here, they are definitely influenced by aliens. The idea of a Steadicam machine gun seems great at first, but a weapon mounted this way would need to be carried in the standing position, or maybe the kneeling position. That doesn't make it easy to dive for cover. In the comic book, Repeater can sometimes be seen in the prone position with his machine gun. To do this, he would have to disconnect it from the mount. He wouldn't really need it in that position, but a bipod would be useful. The Steadicam is really only useful when firing from the hip, Rambo style. After looking at such an elaborate weapon system, it's a little anticlimactic to move on to the backpack, but it's a good backpack. It's in an olive green color, the same color as his vest. It's pretty large. It has some good detail. It has a bedroll and some straps and some pouches. It's an excellent backpack, but what I really want is some ammunition ammunition for that machine gun. Let's take a look at Repeater's articulation. He had the articulation that was standard for G.I. Joe figures by 1988, so he could turn his head from left to right and look up and down. He could swing his arm up at the shoulder and swivel at the shoulder all the way around. He had a hinge at the elbow that allowed him to bend his arm at the elbow about 90 degrees. He had a swivel at the bicep that allowed him to swivel his arm all the way around. This was an O-ring figure, meaning he had a rubber O-ring that looped around the inside. That allowed him to move at the torso 
so a bit. He can move his legs apart about so far. He could bend his leg at the hip about 90 degrees and bend at the knee about 90 degrees. Let's take a look at the sculpt design and color of Repeater, starting with his head. And on his head, he has a tan hat. He has black hair. He has kind of a big chin. According to the card art, on his hat, he has his ranger patch and jump wings. The jump wings look more like the Navy and Marines parachutist insignia. On his chest, he has a green vest over a tan shirt, and there is a spot of paint for his Caucasian flesh tone just above the collar. That olive green vest has a mesh pattern on the front and some straps on the back and under his arms for load-bearing equipment. It has some pouches on the front that look like they may be for magazines, but he does not come with a magazine-fed weapon. His arms feature rolled-up tan sleeves with a brown, blocky digital camouflage pattern. His lower arms are bare, and he has a single black fingerless glove on his left hand. He's a big Michael Jackson fan. Some people don't like this Tetris block digital camouflage style, and I understand a more traditional camouflage does look better, and I have a lot of love for the camouflage pattern on Dusty. But I don't mind this so much, I understand the look they were going for. It was executed better on some figures than others, and I think this is one of the better ones. On his waist piece, he has that base tan color with more of that brown camouflage pattern. He has an olive green belt matching his vest and some good detail on that belt. On the left side he has a pouch and a grenade and on the right side he has the loop for the body mount of his Steadicam machine gun. There's also a black detail that connects to another black detail on his right leg and this looks like an extension of the Steadicam mount. And that does make sense. A Steadicam is pretty substantial and it would be larger than what's depicted on the accessories. His legs feature tan trousers with more of that brown camouflage pattern all over them. He has pockets on both thighs and he has that black detail that's the extension of the Steadicam on his right leg. And we finish up with some really nice looking black boots. I have always loved this look. If you think of futuristic military, you may think of Battle Force 2000 or Mega Marines. To me, this is what futuristic military looks like. Repeater has a made up high tech weapon, but he's still wearing an environmentally appropriate uniform. Future soldiers don't want to get shot any more than today's soldiers do. Let's take a look at Repeater's file card. His file card has his faction as G.I. Joe. It has a portrait of Repeater here. I think this artwork looks pretty good. His code name is Repeater. He is the steady cam machine gunner. His file name is Jeffrey R. Therian. Primary military specialty is infantry. Secondary military specialty is heavy weapons. Birthplace is Cumberland, Rhode Island, and grade is E6. His birthplace is in Rhode Island. Hasbro's headquarters was, and still is, in Rhode Island. New England birthplaces are overrepresented on G.I. Joe file cards. This paragraph says, With close to 20 years in the Army, Repeater never got any higher in rank than E6. His performance in the field was always top-notch, but he could never hack it in garrison. He's not a barracks soldier and never could be. But send him out in the bush beyond the farthest base camp, and you'll find that he's the one the other grunts want to soldier with, because he's the one who's going to bring the grunts back in one piece. The grunts love this guy. Close to 20 years in the army, so he's an old timer, like Mainframe, another favorite character of mine. This bottom section has a quote. It says, being the machine gunner is probably the toughest job in an infantry squad. Number one, he's got the heaviest load to carry. Number two, as soon as he starts firing, the enemy knows where he is and becomes their primary target. Number three, the squad depends on him to keep firing through all this to provide maneuvering cover. Your machine gunner should always be the strongest, most stand-up troop you have. That's a good description for Repeater, and I think it also applies to G.I. Joe's other machine gunners. You could say this about Rock and Roll and Roadblock as well. Looking at how Repeater was used in G.I. Joe media, he didn't make any appearances in either the Sunbow or the Deke animated series. He was only animated 
for commercials. In the G.I. Joe comic book series published by Marvel Comics, he first appeared in issue number 82, and he was on the cover. We meet Repeater at the beginning of his G.I. Joe tenure. He is in G.I. Joe's selection program. It's a grueling course designed to test physical and mental endurance. Most recruits dropped out, but Budo, Lightfoot, and Repeater made it. He reappeared in issue number 86, the 25th anniversary issue that introduced the original G.I. Joe. He was in issue number 89, where he manned the gun turret on the Mean Dog in a battle against Cobra and the Dreadnoughts. He was in issue number 93, where he drove the Tiger Sting, a Tiger Force vehicle. That's odd, since he was not in Tiger Force. His final appearance was in issue number 131, where he helped defend G.I. Joe's underground headquarters from an attack by Cobra. He was in the Special Missions series. In Special Missions number 19, he was on a dangerous helicopter mission in the Tomahawk. Repeater took out a Soviet armored hind helicopter with special armor-piercing rounds. He didn't have a lot of appearances. He had potential, but G.I. Joe has so many characters, it's difficult for a non-core character to get a lot of face time. Looking at Repeater overall, I love this figure back then, and I love it now. It may not be perfect, but it has a lot going for it. This is real futuristic military. If you went to the future and grabbed a soldier that was outfitted for a desert mission and brought him back to 1988, he would probably look a lot like this guy. I like the accessories, even though the Steadicam machine gun assembly assembly can be a bit awkward and impractical, it still looks cool. It harkens back to a movie where a similar weapon was used, and it just has a cool factor. Even though the backpack is a bit plain, I still think it looks really good. I think the figure is excellent, the sculpting is great, the colors are great, I like the camouflage pattern. I hear from some fans that they really prefer a more traditional camouflage, and so do I, but I still think this is pretty good. The one thing that's missing is the same thing that's missing on a lot of G.I. Joe machine gunners, and that is an ammunition belt. Some later G.I. Joe machine guns had an ammunition belt accessory, but not Repeater. If you're not going to give him an ammunition belt that fits in his machine gun, it has a slot that looks like it's made for one, then at least an ammunition belt could have been sculpted onto the figure somewhere. That's a minor complaint, though. Repeater is a great figure. I can understand why they put him on a lot of G.I. Joe merchandise. Repeater and a handful of other figures kept me interested in G.I. Joe for a little bit longer when a large part of the toy line was leaning much heavier into that science fiction side. As G.I. Joe fans, we talk a lot about military G.I. Joe versus science fiction G.I. Joe, but I say you can have both. And in Repeater, you do have both. It's a perfect combination. That was my review of Repeater. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you again to Kevin from SEO Toy Review for helping out. Don't forget to check check out the SEO Toy Review YouTube channel. He has a ton of great content on there. If you're a fan of G.I. Joe and you like this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up on YouTube, subscribing to the YouTube channel, hitting the notification bell, and sharing this video with your friends. You can find me on social media on Facebook and Twitter, and I have a website, hcc788.com. Thanks as always to my patrons. You will see a list of names on your screen. All of those people have helped keep this channel going. If you like G.I. Joe and you'd like to help me make more videos about G.I. Joe, please consider supporting the channel on Patreon. You can get some special perks and even find out how to decode the secret messages you see in these videos. Thank you for watching. I'll be back next week with more G.I. Joe. And until then, remember, only G.I. Joe is G.I. Joe. And only G.I. Joe is G.I. Joe. Aliens.